liftoff. You're watching Spaceflight Now's coverage of the launch of Atlantis. Jim Alcell, ATK Corporation is now here. Uh, you take a boarding pass and you get one, right? As would Leroy, as yeah. would you, I'm sure. But you guys already have been. What about me? This is about me. Huh? <laughs> First of all, let's talk about today and this launch. We're kind of back to the routine after a very exciting one-off event. Uh, is it is kind of let down for you guys? Not at all. You know, I, I think the, the people who've had the privilege of being there realize that you, 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 it's never normal. It's never routine. It's always special. Uh, Charlie Hobart, Scorch, and his, his folks, this is an exciting flight for them. Three spacewalks, just two pallets chock full of equipment for the station. It, uh, it, it's an important step to the last segment of flights that we'll be flying the space shuttle on. It's a critical milestone, so it's, it's an important flight. Why do they call them Scorch? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. And I'm pretty sure if I knew, I would not be able to tell you. Uh, you know what it is. So. This is a state you know what it secret. Is. This has become like, have a life of its own. And now if he tells, it'll be such a disappointment. It's going to be a dud of a story. It that's the bottom line. It's going to be a dud. Tell. It's going to be a dud. I, I'm afraid so. And I think it's that's like what it is. It's like the eggs one morning. You know? <laughs> that's the story. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, i got to come up with something better than that. Yeah. Right? yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, I want the, the ATK, the, the Ares 1X launch. Here's what I want to do with you. We're going to play the tape. And let's just talk through the flight here. And uh, in particular, we, we've got a couple angles. We've got the, the uh, kind of the onboard stuff, and then we've got this shot from an airplane from a while uh, that was shot a, a little distance away. T minus 10. And it, it's a great nine, perspective, and you can eight, also see what happens seven, with the shoots. But let's kind of walk six, through this thing. Five, um, four, there you see on the three, left hand side, that's two, the aerial shot. Obviously, one, it's still flying. Two, you don't have it sitched up very well. There it goes. Well, there you okay, go. so. Yeah, notice, one, notice the first balloon. That was actually <laughs> planned. That was one two, degree. Two, uh, to the south to make sure it flies away from the tower to reduce any probability of, uh, of recontacting the tower. That's probably what ignited things on the tower, though, probably. Prob it might have had some, and that was uh, an issue that we had discussed before launch. So we knew there, were, there was a trade to be had there, but everybody wanted to make sure we had no possibility of recontact. And uh, I think everybody was surprised by the, the speed with which it, uh, it took off. It, was, it, it looked about the same as a space shuttle launch with respect to the acceleration, right. uh, which means it, it gets out of town fairly quickly. I think everybody enjoyed the on-vehicle views and looking down the stack at nice. the plume. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had absolutely no indications of, uh, of any kind of thrust oscillation to be of concern about or any of the bending advanced. modes. There wasn't any of that? Uh, so far, the data, including the video that you have here, uh, shows that it was a nominally quiet motor, which means that any combustion uh, system is going to have some type of uh, thrust oscillation, but there was nothing here that we haven't seen before on all the quiet shuttle motors. It was right down the middle in terms of its performance. Uh, they, they look at the thrust curve that they tried to achieve with the vehicle, and they put a band around that that is acceptable, and we flew right down the middle of that for the whole flight. Well, that's good, because I know that was a big concern in advance. Are you still, how much uh, data massaging are you doing right now? Uh, they're in the middle of, you know, you give engineers uh, all these megabits of data, Data. And, what you, and what's really important is that you not only have each individual engineer looking at his or her piece of the puzzle, but then you want to bring it all together in an integrated fashion. And that part always takes a little bit longer than we would like, and that's what's happening right now. Uh, not because there's anything untoward or unexpected there, but it's just a lot of work to sync up all the data and to get determine the, uh, interpret the results that you can. But right, that's so what these guys live for. It was it was interesting watching that uh, bow shockwave as it went through there. That was a pretty shot there. Right, you know, on the shuttle, because it's so unsymmetrical, you don't really see it as clearly as we did on this day on the Ares launch, when you get you got that beautiful umbrella. Did we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And here we got a full kind of umbrella, I call it, mushroom of, of the shockwave as, as we were going through the uh, transonic region. Tell us about how separation works. When it looked um, like they just kind of broke apart and floated apart. Was that the way it was supposed to look? Well, uh, we knew because the upper stage was a dummy vehicle. There were no, uh, there was no motor to kickstart right. as soon as we separated. Nor were there any yellow settling motors, which 
are to fire right after separation to help move it away uh, before the big J2 motor start. There was no attitude control system. And furthermore, we knew that it was aerodynamically unstable. So everything that we saw on the Aries 1X flight was expected. Now, that doesn't mean that it wasn't exciting. When you see that kind of motion in between vehicles, and it was exacerbated by the tumble motors going ahead and putting the first stage into a tumble, and there for a little while you had both of them going in separate directions, but that won't happen with the real J2 because it will have an attitude uh, upper stage, it will have an attitude control system, it will have the LH settling motors moving it away, so uh, and the J2 will light just a few moments after that separation. So. You know, we're talking about doing another test after this successful test, and those are the kinds of things that would be on the menu for another test flight come maybe 2012. Oh, hey, don't, don't Nine, cut away from that shot eight, of uh, the, the, the booster coming down, please. Six, Can you put that shot back five. up? Can you put that shot? Uh, we're just getting to the part I wanted to talk about. Oh, we had a little problem. All right, well... I wanted to talk to you about the parachute. It looks deployment. like maybe, there, maybe is right. That, is that it? it uh, I can't see it anymore. So in any case, um, the parachute deployment was not nominal, as they say in the business. Right. First of all, hey, right. I never knew they deployed the chute so late in the game. It's about 1,000 feet off the deck. I, I think it's about 5,000 feet, actually, when we like start it, the deployment. Like but that takes some period of That's time. That's the drill, after, right? Well, the drill comes out earlier than that to stabilize the rocket. I think it's between 10 and 15,000 feet. And right. don't quote me on these numbers, but it's right. roughly correct. That stabilizes the rocket in the right attitude to prepare it for the, uh, the uh, main chutes to deploy. And that does happen around the 5,000 foot level. And, and what we saw was we ended up on one and a half chutes out of three. Yeah, right. You had one chute that failed almost immediately during the it deployment like it just, sequence. Yeah, it's blew out right away. And, and somehow we think it interacted with the other right. uh, partially failed parachute. It's tough because it was so that we had a cloud. Gorgeous, you couldn't see right, that, right? At right. the very critical right. moment. But we've also got telemetry data which uh, measures acceleration. So by putting what we can see together in the video, along with the acceleration data, I think they're going to be able to put a, a really good story to it. Plus, we get the parachutes back, including the reefing systems. We'll see which pyro systems fired, which ones perhaps did not, which reefing systems worked properly, and which ones need improvement. All right, so here we here it is again, and, and here's here's a question I have, Roger, <coughs> and I know you're not in charge of the the pointy end of this rocket. That's uh, another contractor with Orion. But if you're talking about bringing human beings back underneath those chutes, you want to make sure they work right. right. Is it is it a different yeah. level of redundancy in testing when there's it's man rated as opposed to just a, a booster? You know, I don't know the answer to that question, but I do know that any time human lives are at stake, you're going to have an extra level of human rating requirements. Right. Uh, Oh, here we go. There's that drogue chute. There's the drogue okay. chute coming out, and right. you see the oscillations as it swings, that's the pendulum as it swings wow. underneath. Yeah. That whole right. thing, uh, yeah. all the weight in that thing coming down, and it's still going at a pretty good clip, even with oh, that yeah. shootout, right? I believe the speed's yeah. like 110 or 15, uh, 20 miles per hour here, and, and now this sets you up for the deployment of the uh, of the main chutes. All right, so watch closely, everybody. As you know, what what happens is, as the as the main chutes come out, you'll notice here, here, here they come. Here they come. And you'll see immediately, one, boom, two, yeah, that one lost that chute. Away. Now that chute, the other one appears to be okay, but then right behind the clouds, something happens. Yeah. And it probably tangled up the other one, right? Right. And as you well know, those parachutes don't open all at once. They just reef in, in three different stages. Partially open, more partially open, and then fully open. And we do that so that the loads are not exceeded at any point in time. Yeah. So it might be as simple as the calculations on the disc reefing system were such uh. that we exceeded... Uh, at one point in time the loads and we'll have to recalibrate the reefing system to make sure we don't do that again. It or there is, might be something else going on here. It is, we'll there is an out. extra segment here, right? And these chutes were redesigned as a result of all this. So They, they were larger. Uh, I think the normal shuttle chutes are on the order of 135 feet in diameter. These are 150 feet in mm -hmm. diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, the largest parachute systems uh, that NASA has any experience with uh, and three of them. So it's a complicated system yep. to get slowed down without exerting too much pressure uh, load on the parachute or on the rocket that it's designed to save. All in all, you guys are pleased enough. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you, you know, you were here, you felt the electricity in the atmosphere, literally the emotions when it was launching, and the excitement when we knew that we had a, a, a successful flight. The engineers are just munching over the data now. Uh, <laughs> Well, he says Everybody. electricity in there. It doesn't mean the tribal electricity. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, by the way, we're figuring that one out, too, so that we have the right waivers in place with the range so they understand that we're not you at risk You guys just enjoyed saying that word, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It was the word of the day there for a couple Jim of days. Jim Halsell, veteran shuttle flyer, tribal electroflyer, and ATK brass 
pleasure to have you here. Thanks Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks you. A lot. And thank you to ATK for your sponsorship of our program. We, all, we do appreciate that. Thank you.